eastern gate of Jerusalem and rapture. When the Lord Jesus made the triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem, he entered through the eastern gate that faces the Mount of Olives. This gate is a golden gate that has an important bearing into the rapture of the church. No wonder in the New Testament, this gate is referred to as beautiful in the book of Acts chapter 3, verses 2 and 10. But to the same city, when he came out through the same eastern gate, the Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23, verses 37 through 39, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When the Lord spoke these words to Jerusalem after passing through this eastern gate, they took a great impact on the church of Christ and hence a rapture. The desolation that the Lord spoke to the temple in Jerusalem after rejecting him essentially implied the desolation that would hit the today's church after she rejects him and the streets and kills the prophets he sent to her asking her to repent and walk in holiness. Ever since the Lord spoke these words, this gate has remained shut to date, and the only time this gate will be opened will be when the Lord returns with his glorious raptured bride on the day of the Lord. It is absolutely amazing and breathtaking that in the Jewish marital practices, as ordained by the Lord God when a bridegroom weds his bride, he invites her to the wedding supper in his father's house and keeps her away from the world for some time and then later returns with her to show her off to the world. This event strongly links the eastern gate of Jerusalem to the Church of Christ because when the Lord takes the church in the rapture, he essentially will invite her into the wedding supper of the Lamb and after exactly seven years tribulation on earth he will gloriously return with her in the glorious splendor of his majesty during the day of the Lord for the second coming of Christ Jesus. Zechariah 14 verse 4 Daniel 7 13 to 14. And when he returns with his bride, the raptured saints, he will show her off to the world as the perfect, glorious bride the world has ever seen. He will step his feet on the Mount of Olives, which faces the golden eastern gate of Jerusalem, thereby causing an earthquake to hit the Mount of Olives and then the eastern gate of Jerusalem that has been closed ever since the Lord spoke desolation to the temple, will be slammed open. The Lord will majestically enter through the eastern gate of the city of Jerusalem and he will rule with her for a millennium. It is surprising that on the Mount of Olives which faces the closed eastern gate of Jerusalem, heaven opened and the Lord was raptured after his resurrection. And yet, it is on the same Mount of Olives that his feet will step on during the second coming of the Lord, thereby causing an earthquake that will slam open the now closed eastern gate of Jerusalem. This implies that the eastern gate is of paramount significance to the Church of Christ. No wonder it was prophesied in the book of Ezekiel chapter 44, verses 2 through 3, when the Lord said, This gate is to remain shut. It must not be opened. No one may enter through it. It is to remain shut because the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered through it. The Prince himself is the only one who makes it inside the gateway to eat in the presence of the Lord. He is to enter by way of the portico of the gateway and go out the same way. Hence. It is through this golden eastern gate that the glory of the Lord would return into the church during the second coming of Christ. However, before the rapture, the latter visitation of the Holy Spirit is predicted in the book of Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 1 through 6, when the levels of anointing increase with every a thousand cubits of water until it becomes a river that no man can cross. 
This is the latter visitation prophesied in the book of Joel chapter 2 verses 28 through 32. While the post-rapture glory of the Lord, that comes with the day of the Lord, is seen in the book Ezekiel chapter 43 verses 1 through 3, when he saw the glory of the Lord come through from the east through the eastern gate. The implication here is that the visitation coming to the church will always be through the eastern gate. The big lesson that the church needs to learn here is that, the monumental closure of the eastern gate of Jerusalem upon their refusal to receive the Lord Jesus during their one and only critical day of visitation is the prophecy of desolation in the church when she fails to receive the Holy Spirit. Accordingly, it is very important for the church to mature up and realize that it is through the eastern gate of Jerusalem facing the Mount of Olives and the open gate of heaven that Jesus was raptured. And the day the Lord Jesus pronounced desolation to Jerusalem and the temple for failure to rise up to her visitation, essentially shut not only the eastern gate, which remains closed until this day, but also closed the gates of heaven. No wonder the church that fails to receive and rise up to her day of Holy Spirit visitation was shut out of heaven when the five virgins who had no Holy Spirit in the lamps their faith and salvation were shut out as the Lord said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 12. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. These prophecies have for a long time spoken to the Church of Christ but she has not paid attention to them and instead opted to go about doing her own business as usual. Therefore, the eastern gate of Jerusalem, covered with gold, which is the deity of God, sits right at the center at the future of the Church of Christ and the question is, is she aware of that? This is a very strong and sobering lesson to the Church of Christ, that when the hour of visitation comes, grab it with every fiber of your heart and please, 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 don't miss it because there isn't another. The gates of heaven always shut after the visitation. Does this look familiar to you when you examine today's church? The Cornerstone of Zion the eastern gate of Jerusalem faces the Mount of Olives, which is a very rocky mountain and yet very central to the life of the church. On this mountain, many people have been buried on the belief that when the Messiah comes, those on the mountain slopes will be the first to be raised from the dead. Now, this is a hint of the rapture of the church except that most of these religions got it wrong because the rapture is prepared for when one is still on earth. During the second coming of Christ Jesus, he will destroy the enemy with the breath of his mouth. This rock the Mount of Olives therefore remains as a monument and symbolizes the cornerstone of Zion, who was rejected by Jerusalem in which case the eastern gate remains closed towards the Mount of Olives. The closure of the eastern gate towards the Mount of Olives also symbolizes the rejection of the Rock of Rocks who is Jesus by not only Jerusalem, but also the Church. This rejection of the Lord Jesus by the Church is clearly presented in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 4 through 8, in which he says that this living stone the Lord Jesus is rejected by men and yet precious to Jehovah God. The stone that Jehovah God laid as a cornerstone for Zion and the church. In the same book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 7, the Lord God says that this cornerstone, rejected by men, has become the capstone, and yet is also the rock that causes man to stumble and fall, then they don't receive him. Therefore, the closure of the eastern gate towards the stony and rocky Mount of Olives is very prophetic to the Church of Christ and symbolizes her rejection of Christ Jesus, the head and bridegroom of the Church. The King of Glory will step his feet on the rocky Mount of Olives and destroy his enemies, thereby establishing an everlasting dominion which is the cornerstone, the Church. Daniel 2, 34-35 Daniel 2, 
44245. This cornerstone will become a huge mountain that will cover the whole earth and destroy the idolatry in the church. The idolatry in the church right now is represented here by the big statue that the cornerstone smashes. Such idolatry that the altar of the Lord include the preaching of the false gospel of prosperity, love of money, sexual sin and immorality, homosexuality and lesbianism, personal kingdoms in the church, e.g. the kingdoms of bishops and pastors, politics in churches, church constitutions running the churches and not the Holy Spirit among others. Since it is the chief cornerstone that destroys the enemy and yet he has been locked out of church, then it explains why the devil has complete dominion and reigns in the church today. The fact that the Mount of Olives has a lot of olive trees growing on it, is a clear indication that the kingdom of the Lord Jesus that is coming, will endure forever since the olive trees represent the Holy Spirit, who comes with enormous perseverance. The closure of the eastern gate facing the Mount of Olives, which has olive trees growing on it symbolizes the perseverance of the Rock of Ages in the midst of bitter rejection Isaiah 53 verse 3. This kingdom will be run by the power of the Holy Spirit and His power and glory will have no bounds. However, when Jerusalem rejected the chief cornerstone who is Christ Jesus, the closure of the eastern gate had an eternal implication into the life of the temple in Jerusalem and stands as a very historic and eternal physical and spiritual monument to the Church of Christ. In other words, this implies the rejection of the Lion of the tribe of Judah by both Israel and the Church Zechariah 10 verse 4. Only a remnant 144,000 Revelation 14 one two five from Jerusalem will therefore make it into the kingdom of God. This means that the rejection of the Holy Spirit visitation by the church also has an eternal implication. No wonder in Matthew chapter 22, only a remnant for whom the wedding banquet was not prepared and are out in the streets, make it into heaven. Accordingly, the triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus from the Mount of Olives into the city of Jerusalem, on a donkey, as many shouted, in the book of Mark chapter 11 verse 9. Hosanna! Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord! Was also very prophetic to the Church of Christ. This is so, because it foretold the second coming of the Lord Jesus when his feet will step on the Mount of Olives and make a triumphal entry into Jerusalem. However, this time though, he will be riding on a white glorious horse as he enters Jerusalem through the eastern gate, and those who will be shouting Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord will be the raptured saints. Furthermore, the judgment of the nations will take place at this eastern gate of Jerusalem when it will be slammed open by the earthquake on the rocky Mount of Olives and the glory of the Lord will enter the temple of the Lord. It is consequently so critical that the Church of Christ will always recognize her hour of visitation and have her eastern gate the faces the rock of ages Christ Jesus open and for the doors of heaven to remain open to her. For without a mighty latter visitation, she cannot make it into the rapture. The eastern gate of Jerusalem closed and facing the olive tree rich, rocky Mount of Olives, is a great lesson to the Church of Christ. The Lord Jesus and Rapture The triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus through the eastern gate into Jerusalem was not only a prophecy fulfilled, but also a prophecy given to the Church of Christ about the events to come. In the book of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, the Lord God spoke about this triumphal entry. On the other hand, when the Lord Jesus was crucified, died, buried and resurrected, he closed and locked the gates of Hades and holds the keys. Revelation 1 verse 18. 
This triumph over death is part of the Eastern Gate prophecy to the Church because upon his resurrection the Lord Jesus came by the Eastern Gate and went with his disciples onto the Mount of Olives from where he was raptured into heaven. In other words, he spoke to the Church Christians through his own rapture and showed her the way to the rapture. The deeper revelation on this prophecy is that the rapture takes place on the Mount of Olives and yet the eastern gate that faces this mountain is closed, rendering the temple of the Lord desolate. This is a mighty prophecy to the church concerning the rapture because the Lord Jesus before he was raptured on the Mount of Olives, he had defeated death and his mortal body having been converted to an immortal imperishable body. By going through this process, the Lord Jesus spoke a strong statement to the church that she needs to receive the Holy Spirit and change her mortal nature flesh into the immortality. This is the same prophecy that will raise the dead Christian who lived in complete holiness, first and dress them with immortal bodies at rapture. Therefore, the closed eastern gate facing the root of the rocky and stony Mount of Olives is a monumental wake-up call to the church and that failure to recognize her hour of Holy Spirit visitation also closes the door on rapture. The tragedy here is that all this was prophesied in the book of Matthew. Chapter 24 verse 37 to 38 When the Lord said, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. This biblical prophecy must be fulfilled in these last days and it spells out very clearly that the church would be insensitive to the Holy Spirit visitation, abusive to the servants of righteousness and holiness, loving pleasure and that judgment would come as floods, and that only a very small remnant will make into the rapture like did only Noah's family out of the whole earth. This certainly puts the church into a very tight corner rapture-wise. To be clearer, she misses a rapture. No wonder in Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 14, and Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, the church misses a rapture because of failing to receive the Holy Spirit. Restoration of Israel Chronology of countdown towards a rapture of the church highly revolve around events in and about Israel. One of the mightiest fulfilled biblical prophecies of our time is the rebirth of the nation of Israel. This began when the Spirit of the Lord started gathering the Jews from diaspora and bringing them back to the promised land. This very highly significant event that the Lord Jesus called the sprouting of leaves on the fig tree refers to the formation of the nation of Israel Luke 21, 29-36. The Prophecy on Israel In 1948, the State of Israel was formed by David Ben-Gurion thereby fulfilling a very important biblical prophecy. In this prophecy, the Lord had forewarned through his servants the prophets, that Israel, upon entering the promised lands would fall away into sin and forget the covenant they had with Jehovah, a situation that would provoke him to anger Deuteronomy 4 colon 27 31. Again, here the church can clearly see the holy nature of the Lord God and his zero tolerance to sin even unto Israel, the wife of Jehovah, the firstborn of all nations. After loving her so much to the extent of bringing ten plagues on the Egyptians, accompanied by the great signs and wonders, delivering them across the Red Sea and the Jordan River in historic moments, he finally abandoned them for their sinful and wicked nature, punishing and scattering them in the diaspora among the nations. Because of failure to adhere to his covenant, command, laws and decrees, the Lord scattered them across the globe into Africa, Europe, Asia, the Americas, Australia and other places on the surface of the earth. The Big Baliyah The process of Aliyah, 
i.e. bringing the Jews back to the Promised Land, was a long and tortuous one in which the Spirit of the Lord caused them to long for Jehovah with all their hearts, so he may rescue them and return them home. By listening to their cry and returning them to the Promised Land, the Lord fulfilled prophecy and presented yet another of his nature. As a powerful respecter of everlasting covenant of love with man Isaiah 11, 11 to 12 and Ezekiel 36, Jeremiah 30, 1 to 3, Joel 3, 1 to 3 and 4 that mega restoring Israel. The Lord intended this to be a mighty lesson for the church to learn from on his faithfulness to those who keep his covenant. It is amazing that this immigration into Israel started much earlier as far back as 1920s and came in several waves. The first waves were termed illegal immigrations. The May Declaration Therefore, the Declaration of the State of Israel on May 14, 1948 immediately after the British had pulled out of Palestine, essentially marked the beginning of end time for the church Matthew 24, Luke 21. But has the church been aware? However, it is noteworthy that forming the state of Israel came after a prolonged agonizing process which sometimes was marred by controversy between two main factions among the Jews. David Ben Gurion David Ben Gurion leaving one faction went ahead and formed the state of Israel, while the orthodox ultra-religious Jews thought the time was not ready for the formation of the state of Israel. The orthodox Jews at that time believed that the state of Israel can only be formed after the coming of the Messiah. This caused interfactional fighting between the two camps. Ben Gurion Nevertheless led the pro-state faction successfully to form the State of Israel hence sparking of a huge Aliyah immigration of Jews from all over the world. The Jews who emigrated from countries such as Egypt, Iraq, Iran, etc. become known as Sitharadim while those that came from the United States, Europe etc. were known as the Ashkenazi. The Holy Spirit however, did not allow the declaration of a state by the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. For instance, in September 1948 when Egypt allowed such a declaration in Gaza, it failed to take off completely. And every time an Israeli leader tried to trade off any piece of this property, belonging to the Promised Land, with the Palestinians, the Holy Spirit removed them from positions of leadership. Most recent cases being Isaac Rabin and Ariel Sharon. Ethiopian Jews. Most interestingly, Israel began looking for her lost tribe, Dan, and in the process discovered communities in Ethiopia that kept strict Jewish culture. They were found to observe very strict Jewish dietary law, kosherut, strict observance of Sabbath, Shabbat, all the Jewish festivals, and they maintained scrolls of Torah. These Jews are also thought to be descendants of Menelik I, the son of King Solomon with the Queen of Sheba. Some of them are also considered to have been descendants of the Jews that left Israel back to Egypt, after the destruction of the First Temple. Surprisingly, come early 1980s, a huge number of these Ethiopian Jewish communities began walking towards Israel from Ethiopia through the wilderness into the Sudan, in a strange bizarre adventure that practically replicated the biblical exodus in the days of Moses, thereby causing it to be called Exodus II in this modern age. In this process, 2,500 Ethiopian Jews were able to make it back home into Israel. However, this exodus too took a great toll on the elderly and the weak women and children. Operation Moses The high death toll in Exodus too prompted the Israeli government to get involved in secret negotiation with Sudan which gave rise to the secret Operation Moses. 
This operation was done in complete news blackout between November 21, 1984 and January 5, 1985 hence allowing 8,000 Ethiopian Jews to come back home from Africa. In this operation, Hercule transport planes carrying 200 immigrants each were successfully used. What cannot escape one's attention is the fact that the Holy Spirit repeated the events of the biblical exodus in modern times, which is a vividly strong message to the Church. But is the Church aware of this? Operation Solomon Israel having realized that not all the Ethiopian Jews were taken in Operation Moses, immediately instituted the secret Operation Solomon. In this operation, Secret negotiations took place between Israel and Ethiopia culminating into the May 31, 1991 secret airlifting of 14,324 Ethiopian Jews into Israel. This was the swiftest aliyah as it lasted only 36 hours and was brought to completion. Having said this, it is important to know that the most recent wave of aliyah as it is popularly known, i.e., the emigration into Israel came after the collapse of the Communist Soviet Union when the Russian Jews were finally allowed to immigrate into Israel. Prior to this massive wave of Aliyah from the former Soviet Union there was the Reagan list of a few Jews who were allowed to return to Israel even during the Cold War. The Russian wave of immigration into Israel was the largest in the shortest time possible. This essentially demonstrates the urgency with which the Holy Spirit is fulfilling prophecy towards the day of the Lord Jesus. Six-Day War and Jerusalem The restoration of Israel that was prophesied by Moses, Ezekiel and other servants, would never have been complete without the total return of city of Jerusalem with its Mount of Olives back to Israel. To facilitate the completion of restoring Israel and fulfilling its prophecy, the Spirit of the Lord enabled Israel to overcome the dreadful attack from all her neighbors combined in the Six-Day War. On June 5, 1967, Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Algeria, Kuwait, Sudan and the whole Arab world having been heavily armed with sophisticated weapons from the former Soviet Union, prepared to attack Israel as a combined force. The purpose of this attack was to delete Israel out of the map of the world. In view of the gravity of the impending attack, Israel with its otherwise inferior weapons in the time, preemptively attacked Egypt and destroyed all their planes before takeoff and captured the Sinai Peninsula. On other war fronts Israel fought Jordan and captured the city of Jerusalem, and fought Syria and captured the Golan Heights. At the same time, she took over the Gaza Strip and the West Bank thereby emphasizing urgency of restoring the Promised Land. Later, the Sinai Peninsula, which is where Moses received the Ten Commandments from the Lord, was returned to Egypt in a peace treaty. Nevertheless, this six-day war is biblically very significant to the Church because it brings Jerusalem back to Israel as the nations of the earth enter into end time. In the book of Ezekiel, the servant of the Lord God prophesied unto the Church that God Russia would lead Persian Iran Kush Ethiopia and her allies in invading Israel in a massive war that ushers in the tribulation. Here, it becomes noticeable that this end time war prophesied by Ezekiel will essentially be a repeat of biblical event Ezekiel 38, 8-18. This is particularly true because in the Six-Day War 1967 God unilaterally armed its allies against Israel. Therefore, God has emerged with a track record of arming its allies against Israel. Surely. There is nothing that Jehovah God does that cannot be found in the Bible. His ways are always the same. But is the Church aware that the Six-Day War Alliance has set a stage for the god Mago War? Beginning of Birth Pains
This period was prophesied as the dispensation that comes right before the rapture of the church takes place. A lot of signs were prophesied by the Lord Jesus to appear at such a time and the events that would characterize this period involve signs in the sun, moon and stars and on earth. These would create a lot of anguish and anxiety among nations, and at the roaring of the sea, terror and fear at what is coming on the world and the shaking of the heavenly bodies would grip the earth. Luke 21, 25-28 Occurrence of these events would imply that the redemption of man has drawn nearer. However, the church again has not heeded the signs of this critical time. This time is the most crucial within the history of the church because it paves the way for the rapture to take place any minute from now. The Tribulation the spirit of Antichrist is already at work in today's world and only the Holy Spirit is able to hold him back awaiting the period of tribulation when the church has been taken away. The tribulation comes with a seven-year false peace treaty with Israel Matthew 24, 9-4, Luke 21, 12-19, Daniel 9 verse 27. This treaty will result in a deal from a great war against Israel as prophesied in the books of Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39, which war is led by Russia Gog and her Middle East allies, including Iran Persia Ethiopia Kush and Libya put. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 8 this war represents the breaking of the second seal in the throne of room of Jehovah God in heaven. When the Antichrist takes over the earth, he will make men kill each other Revelations 6 verse 3 and persecute Christians who failed to make it into the rapture. At the same time, the one world religion will take shape because the church has already been taken away. The tribulation will last for three and a half years while the great tribulation will last another three and a half years Matthew 24. 15 to 28, Luke 21, 20 to 27. This period begins with the abominations of the desolation which results into the stopping of worship in the temple of the Lord. The Great Tribulation also marks the great distress because the Antichrist declares himself God and stops worship in the temple of the Lord. The mark of the beast will then be declared and the world economic dictatorship will now take root. It is however important to know that, the technology that the Antichrist will use to institute the mark of the beast is already available to date ushering in a one world government. After this comes the second coming of the Lord. This is a great and glorious period in which the Lord Jesus sets up a mighty kingdom Revelation 20. 1 to 8 and that is when Satan is bound for a 1,000 years. The Lord Jesus then proceeds over the final judgment in a series that leads to the new heaven and a new earth after the war of Armageddon.